All right. So, another Monday afternoon. Let's go ahead and get started. How's everybody doing today? Today we will be um, looking at the lenses and going over those problems. There's several problems there. Um, and this is going to be kind of a another short chapter, and we're going to be done with it basically for next time. So we're going to homework. Um, the homework for next time is not going to be due until Wednesday, and then um, we'll just have a little bit of review after that. And I'm planning for a short test next Monday. Um, so just a little heads up there. Um, we will be. I mean, and, and it's just going to be basically about lenses. It's just this chapter. We're not going to combine this chapter with anything else. Okay. So, um, let's go ahead and get started on this. Today we're going to be going over 14B, and then the homework, I think I already put it up on Google Classroom, uh, is 14C, which is the last section that we're going to be covering in this chapter. Okay? So let's get started here. Um, here we go. 14B, and you guys had to do, I'm just looking this up, 1 to 3, and then 4A and C. Any questions about anything before we start? Okay. So let's look at these together. So I have my calculator, I do. Nice. All right, number one, we've got an object placed 20 centimeters in front of a converging lens. So they're conveniently using the terms for us, converging lens. So it helps us realize that in this case, your F is going to be positive and um, you have a focal length of 10 centimeters. So number one, your F is 10 centimeters and it's positive because it's converging. You have an object, so your P is 20 centimeters. All right, let me just, let's move this down a little bit. There we go. So we have 20 centimeters and find the magnification and the distance and describe the image. Actually, this didn't say to draw it. I would like for you guys to draw some of these um, because I didn't say anything specifically. If you didn't draw an image, um, if you didn't draw the, you know, the lens diagram, no big deal on this one. But it's really, really good to get some practice on drawing these because you will have to draw them for the test and I will specify that you have to draw them. There may be a question, just like last test, where you didn't have to draw for all of them, but you did have to draw for two of them. So make sure you're ready for that. Okay, so we have the lens equation. Just like always, we have 1 over P plus 1 over Q is 1 over F. In this case, F is positive because it's converging lens. And that's going to give us, um, and let's just plug in the numbers here. So we have 1 over F. See, is that, yeah, that's visible. All right, so 1 over F, that's going to be 1 over 10. Or you could, you could even do this one in your heads, right? 1 over 10 is 2 over 20. Then we're going to subtract 1 over 20 from that. So Q is going to be 22. But let's just go ahead and do the math here, and, and you can see how that works, okay? So we have 1 over 10 right, for 1 over f, and then we're going to subtract from that 1 over p, which is 1 over 20, right, and this is going to be 0.05, and we're going to take the inverse of that, okay, and that's going to be 20, okay, and so we can see back over here, 1 over 20 plus 1 over q equals 1 over 10, and this is going to be 2 over 20, right? 1 over 10 is 2 over 20. Subtract 1 over 20 from both sides. And so that gives you 1 over Q is 1 over um, 20 or Q is 20. Don't forget your units. All the time people are forgetting their units. It's really, really sad. Um, it's a sad way to lose points because I know you guys know the units. You just need to write them down. Don't forget to write your, them down, okay? If you start off with centimeters, this is also going to be centimeters. There, is, there are no units for magnification, but Q and P and F always, always have units. So your magnification is negative Q over P, which is going to be um, basically negative 1, right? Or, yeah, so, so Q is 20 and P is 20, so this is negative 20 over 20, so this is going to be negative 1. 
okay? So negative one, so we're expecting, before we even draw it, let's think about what in the world does that mean, okay? Because Q is positive, we know it's gonna be on the other side of the lens, and that's gonna be a real image, right? Because this is negative, it, we expect it to be inverted, upside down, right? And because it's one, we expect it to be the same size. It's not gonna be bigger or smaller. All right. And so that is, those are our expectations. Were there any of the questions? I don't think so. That's, yeah, that's pretty much it. So real image, inverted, upside down, right? Same size. Now, let's go ahead and draw this because you really, really need to be able to draw these just like the mirrors. We gotta be able to draw the lens equations. And we have, um, let's get a ruler straight edge for this. Makes it a little bit easier. So this is gonna be your principal axis, and let's just put a lens right in the middle here. Um, because it's a converging lens, I should make the lens like this. So it's thin on the ends. Um, and sorry about this line there. It should be thin at the ends and then fat in the middle, like this. And then here, right here is your center, and then you have a focal length and you can do this as you like here. I'm going to, um, let's just go ahead and give us a little bit more room. So the focal length of 10, I'm gonna put there at 20, and then I'm gonna put our object, let's put our object on the left here. So that's gonna give us a focal length, a focal point here, and then the object is right there. And I think I'm going to draw a tree. Just like that. And we have, just like we did before, we've got parallel in. That's parallel. It's hard to get parallel. So parallel to the principal axis in, and then it's going to go through the focal point on the other side. So it should be like this. Parallel in. Once you get to the center of the lens, then it's going to be bent out through the focal point like this. Okay. And this is going to be through the center. It does not bend at all. I probably should have used two different colors, but I think you guys get the idea. The lines cross over here on the other side of the lens. And therefore, this is the top of the tree on the other side of the lens, and here's your tree. And it should be the same size upside down, what that looks like is about the same size upside down. This is 10, this is 20, that looks just about right. Okay, so you just some, some kind of drawing this like that. Okay, questions on any of that? So I'm seeing some people here, how's it going, everybody? All right, number two, Sherlock Holmes examined, examines a clue by holding his magnifying glass at arm's length 10 centimeters away from an object. The magnifying glass has a focal length of 15 centimeters. And we know, let me see, it doesn't, it doesn't actually really specifically say this. So you might be wondering, okay, is this a converging lens or a diverging lens? Now, if you know anything about magnifying glasses, you would know that all magnifying glasses must be a converging lens. All right, that's the only way that they can make things bigger. Diverging lenses always make things smaller. So even though it doesn't say, like I'm not seeing it anywhere, all right, I, yeah, I'm not seeing it anywhere we know that it's got to be converging lens simply because it's a magnifying glass. So, when to say that's going to be a converging. And sorry if that was a little bit confusing. So this is going to be 10 centimeters away from an object. So once again, we get a, a value for P. That's going to be 10 centimeters. And you have a focal length of F is positive 15 centimeters, not negative, positive because it's magnifying glass, it's converging, and we want to find um, all the same kind of information about it. So this case, the object is further away, let me see, 
um, then the, the object is closer to the uh, lens than the focal point. So we might find something a little bit different this time. Let's go ahead and see how it works. So we have one over 10 centimeters plus one over Q equals one over 15 centimeters. And that's gonna give us something. So we have 15, this is smaller than this. So we're gonna get a negative value for Q. Let's see how that works. One over 15 minus one over 10 gets us a negative number. We're gonna take the inverse of that and it's negative 30. So Q is negative 30 centimeters. Again, don't forget your units there. Oh, um, Jeremiah, so positive and negative is an indicator of a flipped or not flipped image. No, no, no. Um, positive or negative for M is an indicator of your flipped or not flipped. So when this thing is negative, when Q is negative, that tells you that it's a, um, a, a, a um, virtual image. When Q is positive, it tells you that it's a real image. So you can't necessarily look at this and tell whether it's flipped or not. Not necessarily. All right, you have to actually calculate. Okay, I think we were gone there for a second. Um, I don't know whether you got the last part um, and I calculated M. So let me, let me go back over some of these questions here. Um, talking about M not Q. All right, so um, what does a virtual image look like in a lens? So same idea. Virtual lenses, if, you're, if your eye, so if you're looking, uh, let, me, let me draw like a lens down here. Okay, so if we have a lens, all right, and somebody's eye is over here, right? And you got, you know, whatever. So somebody's looking. And there's some object over here, okay? Uh, whatever it is, a tree. When you look through the lens and you see some image, whether the image is real or virtual, you can still see it, and it still looks the same. It looks like whatever image it is. So, so if it looks, if it's a tree, it looks like a tree. There's no difference in that aspect. The only difference is this: if it's a, <coughs> if it's a real image, you can project that onto something. So let's suppose now that, <coughs> um, let's suppose you're over here, and the object is right over here. Okay. And you're going to, let's say, have some light on the object, create an image over here. If it's a real image and you have a piece of paper or you have a projector, um, like a, a screen over here, you can see that real image on the screen, okay? But if it's not a real image, if it's a virtual image, you won't be able to see it on the screen, okay? You can only see it if you look through the lens and then you can see it. So it doesn't matter whether it's real or virtual in terms of you being able to see it through. Uh, shoot, I don't know if you guys saw all that. Um, it doesn't matter whether it's real or virtual um, in terms of your ability to see it through this lens, but if you want to project it on a screen, you can only project a real image on the screen. Okay? Same thing with your eyes. Your eyes project real images on the back of your eyeball right, on the rods and cones, the nerve endings in your eyeballs, that's a real image that is being observed, that is being um, felt um, on the back of your eyeball, okay? But a virtual image, you can see it, but it's not actually projected onto that particular surface, okay? So in a ray diagram, they're both diagram the same. Yeah, they're both diagram the same. So I think this one is going to end up being so right. So this is negative. This is going to end up being virtual. So let's let me draw this one, and then we can compare the two things with each other. This being a virtual one, and the top one being a real one. Okay. So on this one, let's go ahead and draw our principal axis right here. All right, and we're going to draw our. We're going to put our object on the other side. Let me see, we had P of 10 and an F of 15. And we'll go ahead and just use those small numbers. So this is our center. And the object 
is well actually no, that's really really small so we'll go ahead put the object here and we said the focal length is 15 so we'll make that at 30 and we'll put the other focal point over here at 30. okay so let's suppose this is our focal point this is our focal point and this is our object right here okay so how's this work if you have a situation where your object is closer to the lens than the focal point, um, the same principles are going to happen. So let's say we're going to do, do parallel in, let's flip this around. We're gonna do parallel in and then focal point out. Okay, and then this light is going to because the converging lens is going to come this way, it's going to be bent inwards, right? It's going to go off like that. And we're going to go ahead and project this, and it's going to, the light's going to go through here, through the center. But we notice that these two lines never intersect on the real side. So if this is your eye and you're looking, um, the light, these two light, the, these two light beams, are, they're never going to connect over here, okay? So you can't have a real image projected onto a screen on this side. So how do we do this? Well, these two rays of light do intersect, just not in the real world. They intersect over here. They intersect from where it appears that they are coming from. So you need to continue these lines of light backwards. Um, the bent beams, not the original beams. So let me go back a little bit more like that. Um, and then, and this is really um, important here, is it's very tricky to say, okay, well, which one am I going to follow back? Am I going to follow back this line or am I going to follow this line? You're definitely always, always going to follow back the line that was bent. So, so this was parallel in and then focal point after it goes through the lens. So we're going to follow the line after we went through the lens. And that's the one we're going to follow backwards. Okay? And it's going to be just like this. I'm going to make it dotted. I make it dotted just because it's not, there's no real light there. This is just where these beams of light. Now, obviously, you can see, so this is where the observer is, right? If the observer is looking at this tree, through this lens, the observer will see an image, right? It's just that the image isn't going to be on this side. It's just in, it, but it is these rays of light that hit the eye. It's just that when it, these rays of light hit the eye, it appears as though the image is, is this one back here. All right, and th so that's how this works. And so where these cross is where the image should be <coughs> way back here. Okay, and this is your image, which is not real. It's going to be a virtual image. Virtual because it's on the same side as the object. And it's going to be also virtual because this is negative. And it's going to be bigger because this is magnification is three. And you guys can see that that image is quite big. And it's, it's going to be upright. Right? It's not inverted in any way. Okay? So, um, those are, you know, two good drawings of what lenses, you know, the kinds of, you know, lens diagrams that I might expect for you guys, okay? <clears throat> so this is a lens where um, you have a real uh, image, and it's a real image, so if you were to put a screen there, and you were to have a light here, and you could see that image on the screen, projected on the screen, so you could see it either by looking over here, or by looking on over here, either side you could look on, um, look and see the image uh, if you projected that screen there. Okay, so that's kind of the main thing. All right, so let's go ahead and continue on for number three. Number three, we have what? You get an object placed 20 centimeters in front of a diverging lens. Definitely, we want to be able to see both your converging and diverging lenses. So make sure you're able to do both of these. I'm going to go ahead 
Um, I might come back to this. I'm going to go ahead and flip it over so we can go ahead and have plenty of space to do the ray diagram for number three. This diverging lens. And you got 20 centimeters in front of a diverging lens, so we know right away this is P is 20 centimeters. I think they're using 20 quite a bit. And the focal length is 10. Yet yeah, this looks exactly like the first one. Okay, that, this is, this is crazy. This is crazy that this, um, this is having this many tech issues. Anyway, sorry. So back to number three. <clears throat> number three looks exactly like number one, except it's a diverging lens rather than a converging lens. So let's go ahead and put some numbers in. You get 20 centimeters is your P. You've got a diverging lens, so it's negative. Focal length of 10, so your focal length is negative 10. It's kind of not nice that they write down a focal length of 10 centimeters because it really, really should be negative 10, technically speaking. So be careful with that kind of wording. Um, yeah, I, so yeah, that's all I gotta say. So be careful with that kind of wording. Focal length of 10, you know diverging lens must have a negative focal length. All right, find the image distance, so find all the same stuff as always. All right, so same equation, one over P, so one over 20 plus one over Q is one over negative 10 this time. So this is going to be subtracting one over 20 from both sides. So this is gonna be one over, so negative one over, no, negative two over 20. So that's going to be negative 3 over 20, so your answer is going to be 20 over 3. Okay. Let me just show you how this works. So 1 over negative 10 minus 1 over 20. Take the inverse of that. Oops. Wrong button. Take the inverse of, take the inverse of that. And it gets us negative 6.67. Q equals negative 6.67. And we're expecting that this is going to be, of course, virtual. Um, and expecting that to be virtual anyway because this is a diverging lens. But let's do the magnification. It's going to be negative Q over P. So that's going to be negative of a negative. So 6.67 over P, which is 20. So this is gonna be quite small. So just take that number, divide by 20, and we're gonna take the negative of that. So it's gonna be one third, so 0.333. So it's gonna be one third. All right, so that's our magnification. That's our value of Q. We already know that this is going to be a virtual image. It's gonna be smaller. Smaller because this is one third. And because this is a positive number, it's gonna be upright. All right, so let's go ahead and do it. This is going to now look like a diverging lens, so it's gonna be fatter or bigger at the ends, and it's gonna be thin in the middle. So thin in the middle, and then fatter on the two ends. And, sorry, that's not exactly straight. There's that. And we have F is 10, P is 20. So let's go ahead and make that 20 and 40. Right there. Okay. The center is right there. These are our focal points, F and F, and then this is where my tree is, my object. Right, oh, I made that a little bit too big because it's like bigger than my lens, which is not a good thing, but it's okay. We can still deal with it. All right, so we're gonna do, once again, parallel in, and then your focal point out. So parallel in, and I'm just gonna, when I come to the middle of the lens, I'll just stop. All right, so I'm just gonna come to the middle of the lens and stop, and then I'm gonna go focal point out. And once again, this is gonna be an issue where we have to deal with 
Um, oh, and remember, if this is a diverging lens, it's not going to go through this focal point, but it's going to go through this focal point, the focal point that's on the same side as the object. All right, and so it's going to be diverging. It's going to go, the actual light is going to bend out. So what we need to do is this actual ray, let me move this down a bit, is going to be going out away. But again, because it's diverging, this is, there's no way this will ever, ever um, intersect on the real side of the lens. It's always going to intersect on this side. So we can go ahead and just continue this on onto the virtual side of the lens, just like that. Okay, and the same thing here for the center. So the light is going to be going through the center and through like this, but you're gonna be going back. So this, these are the directions of the light. These two beams never intersect on the real side, but they do intersect on the virtual side, on the same side as the object, and they intersect right there. And that goes along with what we discovered earlier, and that was that this image is significantly smaller than the original object. In fact, it's one third the size, that's about right. And this is at negative, about, you know, a little around negative seven. So if this is 10, this is seven, that makes a lot of sense, okay? So that's right. Um, and that's what you should have for the lens diagram for number three. Now number four, I said, um, I think you don't actually have to do any diagrams for number four. We're just plugging in some numbers here. So we're just going to fill in the missing numbers, ways to calculate, you know, whether we're calculating P or calculating Q or calculating M. Um, and I don't think, oh yeah, and, and sometimes calculating F. So just trying some different things here. So most of the time, we have been calculating Q, right? And so we're just going to try some different things and calculate P in A and then calculate um, Q. I should have had you guys do D, but I had you, what did I have you guys do? A and C. I should have had you guys do A and D, but anyway, I didn't. We'll just do A and C then. So number four. Let's do these. Number four. So A, no need to draw any of this. We're just going to go ahead and fill in the blanks here. Um, if F is 6, so then it's going to be 1 over P. We don't know P plus 1 over a negative 3 equals 1 over 6. And that's going to be, well, you could, we could even do some of these in our head, right? So if this is one third, this is also going to be um, two six. And so we're going to add two six to both sides. And that's going to get us one half over here. Um, because when you add this to this side, it's going to be, that's going to be positive, just positive at half. One six plus one third is going to be a half, right? So that's one six plus two six is three six or one half. And that means P is going to be two. Okay, I think that's right. And calculate M is just negative. Oh, and don't want to forget those units, right? It's so easy to forget the units. So P is two centimeters and M is negative Q over P. So this is going to be Q we said was, what was Q? Q is negative three, right? So negative of negative. So this can be three over two. So magnification is going to be three halves or simply 1.5 for that one. Okay. All right. That's A and C. C is we know F. We know P. One over four centimeters plus one over Q equals one over negative six. And now um, let's just do that in our calculators. It's going to be a little bit easier. So 1 over negative 6 minus 1 over 4. Take the inverse of that, and we get um, a negative 2.4. Negative 2.4 centimeters for that one. Magnification, 
is simply negative Q over P, which is a 2.4 centimeters over, um, and P was four, right? Four, yep, four centimeters. So divide by four gets us 0.6. Positive because the two negatives canceled out. So 0.6 or 6 tenths there. All right, so that's four, just fill in those numbers, and that's it for the homework. Any questions on the homework before we go on to the new stuff? And I do, I might run a little bit over here, just talk about some of the new stuff. I want to make sure I go over the new stuff. Um, we're going to just skip the live stream tomorrow. I'm going to give you guys two days to work on the homework here. So last homework for this chapter, 4C, uh, no, 14C, and... I think we'll probably do something similar, just two more short chapters to finish out the year and we'll be done. Um, and I, yeah, we, we might even, be, that's why I'm kind of not in a hurry or anything. We may even be done early. Um, and I, I think that's partly a consequence of just not having any time for labs and all that kind of stuff. Not being able to, uh, to do labs gives us, you know, means that we're going to be a little bit of ahead of schedule. But unfortunately, we haven't been able to do any of these labs that we should have done as if we were at school. So, all right. Any questions? Hopefully, these lens diagrams make sense. I think that's going to be, you know, I think it's going to be a little bit easier for you guys now that you've already done mirrors. But keep in mind just the differences between lenses and mirrors. Focus on all these lenses and how to draw them correctly. And the next part is going to be a continuation of what we did before for um, the whole refraction concept, okay? So there's an, an interesting part of refraction, and that is going to be total internal reflection. So let me just get rid of that. And you guys can go ahead and read in the book and check it out there, but I'm going to give you guys a little intro here first. And that concept of total internal reflection. It's pretty cool. And there are some modern applications of this. For example, um, fiber optics is a big thing. And then also kind of not exactly, but it's related to gemstones too. And how gemstones sparkle and the the ability to calculate and cut a gemstone correctly so that it sparkles has got to do with this total internal reflection and how to get um, the light to re come out of a gemstone at particular places. But the biggest kind of application of any of this total internal reflection is in fiber optics and the use of fiber optics. If you guys have ever seen those fiber lamps, they're pretty cool. Um, but they're actually, fiber optics is, is actually very, very useful in... Um, you know, modern technology and, and also just sending signals various different places. We can use lasers instead of using electricity, and it's um, actually a little bit more uh, useful. So, all right, let's get started. How does this work? So we've talked about refraction before, and most of the time when we've talked about refraction, we've talked about light coming from the air and then going into some material such as glass. But what if we were to reverse this? What if instead of going from that light coming from the air and then going into the glass, what if we were to reflect, what if we were to do the, the opposite and we got light that's somehow in the glass, okay? And you can look at light going from the air to the glass to the air again, which is fine. Um, but let's just think about what happens and then let's draw a, draw a normal here. our perpendicular line there. What happens um, when the light is coming like this and we have some kind of light from the glass coming to the air? Now, if it was coming from the air to the glass, we would say that that would um, bend towards the normal, right? But if it's going from the glass to the air, it's going to bend away from the normal. So you have some sort of incident angle here right? And then we have some sort of incident angle coming out here, okay? But what if we, this incident angle was so large that it was, let's say, this 
refracted angle was equal to, was let's say greater than or equal to 90 degrees. All right, what would happen then? Okay, so this difference in the index of refraction was so great that the light would bend away from the normal so much that this angle would now become 90 degrees or even greater. Well, if that were to happen, rather than the light refracting and going out of the material, that light would actually stay in the glass. Okay? And so if your angle here, your incident angle is great enough, and your index of refraction is great enough, that's what's going to happen. And that light will no longer bounce out or go out of the material, but continue to reflect within the material. It's not bouncing off any kind of shiny thing on the you know, surface here. It's simply because you have a large index of refraction difference between the two materials, and because you have a large angle here, you're able to get an angle that's greater than 90 degrees. All right? And that's known as total internal ref uh, reflection. All right, so let's go ahead and actually do the calculation. Right? The same idea, this is Snell's law. And that Snell's law says that n i sine theta i equals n r sine theta r. And we're saying that this refracted angle, what if this refracted angle was greater than 9 degrees? Well, let's just say, what, is, what if it's 9 degrees? So we're going to go ahead and assign that. So n i sine theta i equals n r sine of 90. We're going to find out what, it, what is this, this angle right here if this angle is 90 degrees. And so let's go ahead and solve for this angle. So sine theta incident equals nr sine 90 degrees divided by ni. Okay? And then we're going to take the inverse of this. Well, do you guys know what sine of 90 degrees? Sine of 90 degrees, if you guys are in, make sure you're in degree mode, okay? Yep, I'm in degree mode, right? Sine of 90 degrees is simply just 1, okay? So this nr sine um, of 90 degrees times ni is going to simply be nr over ni. So our angle here, our incident angle is going to be equal to the inverse sine of n r over n i, and we can go ahead and solve it for this particular problem. If this is glass, oh man, what is the, what's the number for glass? Let me look. Is it like 1.4? No, let's just, let's say this is crown glass. This is 1.52, okay? Let's assume n equals 1 for your air and i, and then n r, no, sorry, this is now n i, and this is n r, and i is going to be 1.52. And let's go ahead and calculate the number here to find out the angle. Okay, that's going to be the inverse sine of nr1 divided by ni 1.52, which is what? 41 degrees. Now that's an important number. What does that tell us? That tells us if this thing right here, if this angle right here is, is 40 to 41 degrees or greater, you're going to have total internal reflection. Okay? If this angle right here is 41 degrees or greater, that's going to be total internal re of reflection. So, and, and you'd think that's pretty impressive, right? Because 45 would be kind of like your normal, you know, kind of just straight on there. So that's even, even less than that at 41 degrees, and this is ordinary glass. At 41 degrees, you're going to get internal reflection from that. Okay? So, um, this is your, let me see. Um, this is known as your critical angle right here. For any two different materials. Okay? And you guys are going to go ahead. The homework actually is quite easy this time. But um, I'm just going to give you guys two days to do it anyway because, you know, we're, we're kind of ahead of schedule and we don't have the ability to do any more labs 
which would be great if we could do labs for electronics, which we're going to be doing here pretty soon, uh, but we can't. So anyway, this is going to be our critical angle, which you guys can calculate for any kind of two different materials, what that critical angle is. But it's important that you understand, well, why do you have internal reflection? You have internal reflection simply because if it were to bend, it, that, that angle that it would bend would be nine degrees or greater. And then it, that's literally going to just stay within the material. Okay. And so in that case, it's just going to reflect back. So we're done for today. Have a great rest of your day. All right. Um, yeah. I'm just going to go ahead and sign out. See you guys.